Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 336. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, answer the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have uh, Tim Kappa. Tim uh, uh, is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's also a Google product expert on the Google My Business community. Uh, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's also a Google uh, product expert uh, on the uh, – um, uh, oh, brain, don't, don't lose me now – the AdSense uh, community. And uh, Masataki uh, is, resides in Wimbledon and uh, Tim Kappa uh, in Corby, about 100 miles north of um, London. And shortly, we'll be joined by uh, Micah fischer Kirshner. He's uh, president of um, an online meetup at, in, in sorry, in um, or near Silicon Valley. Um, he resides on the east coast of the USA. We've got 17 questions on our run list tonight. The first one is titled um, Keyword Results uh, in Different Cities. Uh, it's from Web Mo. He, sa he says, that, "Hello, is there a way to change the browser's location and check the keyword results in different cities?" Am I the only one here? There isn't a way using the browser settings, is there? Well, look, um, it, it's something that's um, ne never never interested me in finding out. So uh, um, <sighs> well, it's, it's very much a local question, so it's really in, in Tim's domain, as it were. Um, but I don't think there is a setting in your browser that you can change and say, oh, I'm you know, viewing from another city as such. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just wonder of the value of the information too. I don't know what... Um, um, I really don't. Um, I, I I really can't uh, see any value in, in in even knowing that. Anyway, um, let's uh, let's pass on this one, and we'll go to number. Um, two. Oh, go on, Tim. Uh, what in location? So he wants to look in location. Um, yes, you can even do that in Search Console. You can do that in Search Console. Um, sorry, not in Search Console. Uh, if you go into, uh, oh God, what's it called? If you inspect elements on page, so obviously you want to start it probably on, in incognito. Inspect elements on page. Um, then you can you can either search normal desktop or switch to mobile. Choice is yours. <coughs> And then if you click down on the little um, the, 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 the little three dot job thing, you can see settings. Oh no, more tools. In the more tools, you can then go down and you can actually um, change the uh, location. So that's that's a free way of checking from a different area in search where things are are, are appearing. If you want it in a tool wise, 
then uh, SEMrush offers that. You can select specific areas, uh, local Falcon, but that's become very, very pricey. Um, I don't know about others that do it, but I'm sure that others do allow you to track in different locations. But yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's uh, move on to number two on our run list. Uh, it's titled Buying a Direct Competitor Website. Mike Dejwarik uh, asks, he says, a, has a question regarding acquisition of a competitor website. We're thinking about buying a direct con competitor website, brackets, travel deals. They rank high on a lot of interesting keywords and have a lot of uh, content. How can we take over their uh, high rankings in Google? Can we just 301 redirect all content and keep the same ranking? Uh, or is there another way? Well, as I mentioned in a comment, unfortunately, you can't take a, a, a very high ranking page on another domain and 301 redirect it to a shit page. It's just not going to make the crap page rank, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to. So firstly, you need to relook really at this. If you're buying it just because you think about rankings, I think you're looking at the wrong wrong way. So, I mean, if that was me personally, um, if you wanted to buy them, but you wanted to get rid of, so you could either rebrand that domain and you know use it as a lead generator as such. Or if you totally wanted to get rid of it, yeah, you know, you could read a 301 reader. But I would look at moving across their content. Google obviously likes the content. You would you would replace your your crappy stuff that's not ranking with theirs. You would also have insights from their analytics and search console and things like that into what they are doing better than you. So that would be the other thing. Um, and then yes you could you could replace i mean i would personally use them as uh, run the two and use one as a lead generation but if you wanted to really get rid of the domain as a competitor then use their content the you know google obviously likes their content learn from it guys don't just you know take it and and, and switch it and then you know canonicalize or 301 redirect back to yours um but but use it and learn from it but essentially answering your actual question you know you ain't going to get any benefit redirecting 301 redirecting from one to the other domain just off the bat like that excellent thank you tim can i also uh, mention um, um the, the tim um, answered uh, this question uh, through the week um, and also people like Michael Martinez, Richard Hearn, Andrew Simpson. Um, it, it's um, uh, very much appreciated. Well, in this instance, would it make sense to keep both your own site and the acquired site? Yeah, I would. In well, the, personally, if, personally, I would. I, I mean, I personally would, you know. And use it as a funnel, you know, or, you know, look, I mean, if these guys are offering great stuff, um, you know, ultimately the leads and the deals are going to be coming through to you at, at the end if you own it. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you know. And you might have two bites of cherry for having two different domains and two different sites mm -hmm. for the same query. Well, there's that too. Because the travel sites do that, don't they? Because, you know, they operate different brands. And when you look up who owns them, ultimately, it's the same company. <laughs> yeah, booking.com, hotels.com. Uh, literally, I mean, uh, most of the OTAs are owned by just like literally a handful of companies. They're all owned by each other. I mean, Yeah. All right, uh, moving on to number three on our run list from Ben Williams. Um, it's titled, Is This a Duplicate Content Problem? There's no such thing. Uh, he said, I've done a redirect on my web.
website after I've changed the uh, URL from https uh, full colon slash slash www.example.com slash I dash have dash done dash a dash redirect to. Um, I'm not going to read all that out again. Um, but uh, he then it, it ends up being redirect dash done. Um, then I use the term site. I use the site operator uh, term, and he finds that that the uh, two links have been indexed on Google. And I want to ask if this is a uh, duplicate content problem. God help me. Um. Yep. Uh, any comments? Well, I had what one. That, what was that? What was that first URL? It was redirect done. What? Okay. What was his first we can, example? We can get back to it. Uh, there it is. There. Uh, well, if the so he changed the URL. So yeah. that was the first one. He changed the URL, and then there was another one, which was. Yeah, I'm not getting it. Well, it shouldn't be a problem if the redirect has been done correctly. Mm. Um, and I don't think it would be a problem even if it has not been done correctly, if that makes sense. because. Google will decide which page is the canonical version of that page. Yeah, yeah, correct. So I wouldn't worry about it. And even in the Search Console, have you seen where Google even ignores the canonical? They oh. will literally say to you, we've ignored this. Uh, the new Search Console is really coming on nicely. I was looking at, I was looking at an issue yesterday. But um, it'll say, we've ignored this canonical because we found this one better. <laughs> Check your search console, man. It'll tell you what Google's thinking. Yeah. Okay, let's um, go to the next. This one from AJ Kumar Verma. It's question four in our own list, how to change uh, a URL the right way. Uh, AJ said a messy question about redirects. I started a website four months ago. The original structure of the pages was as as was as below. Uh, MySite.com slash courses uh, slash SEO hyphen training. He said I then changed the structure, stripping the. Um, dash courses away and the new one became mysite.com slash seo training so he's done away with the folder um the courses uh, version redirects to the new urls uh, maybe wordpress automatically adds this now the client wants the original structure with courses my question is how to do it right. Just by editing the URL of the page again, wouldn't it create a redirect loop? Can this all be done without losing the rank? Um, and PS, uh, the pages with the new URL structure without slash courses are ranking fifth on, on are ranking on the fifth page. Thanks. Well, Casey Marquis um, um, offers um, a, a link under the taxonomies uh, tab. Um, it really doesn't matter um, whether you have slash courses or don't have slash courses. Uh, after a, a, a couple of traverses of your site, Googlebot will work it out. 
Um, all the search engines will work it out. Um, I wouldn't spend any time on it. Yeah, I think the problem is, um, you know, moving from one and then reverting, isn't it? As I understand it. So that originally it was with courses in between. Mm. That has been redirected to without courses, but the client wants the courses back in again. Yep, that's it. I mean, clients should be encouraged to send their checks and stay away. That's what I reckon. I mean, uh, I th depending on how much time has passed between these two stages, um, you could be looking into something a bit messy. Depending on how this, you know, the site is structured, mm -hmm. so <laughs> in a sense, if you could convince the client that there is no need to go back to what it was, that might be a better option. Purely because you're going to introduce more complications where things might go wrong, mm -hmm. and the more times you have to redirect and more different combinations you have to think about the likelier you have problems with your redirects breaking things somewhere yeah thank you mr taki all right, let's move on to uh, our next one, unless anybody has anything to add. Okay, this one is number five on our run list. It's titled Increasing Visibility in Another Location from Jamie Rose Santos AQ. Jamie said, hi, everyone. My SEO concern is related with Google My Business. I inherited a client who is in the business of home repairs and they have three physical offices uh, in different locations. They want to increase their visibility in, in another location, but upon accessing their account, I saw that they have about 32 locations pointing to big areas and um, not um an exact address these locations are their service areas i'm guessing this is their previous seo provider's strategy to increase their visibility in google maps i'm torn between following the same practice as i'm not quite sure this is allowed uh, and using their office address in the maps should i create fake locations as well So the first thing is, is never try uh, or never create fake locations. Um, I don't know, you know, you just need to look on any of the GMB forums at the minute. Um, you need to, ha, even looking in, you know, uh, Wall Street Journal this week. Um, Google has turned up the dial massively on locations. Um, and there are listings being suspended left, right, and center. Even when it's a legitimate business, a slight change of category where Google is not recognizing that business to fit within that category, these things are being suspended. I mean, like, it's it's gone crazy. They turned the dial right up after the article about spam in the Wall Street Journal. So do not go down that road because all your legitimate ones could be caught up within your fake ones and the entire lot goes. Coming back from that uh, is not so easy. If it was like sort of a first time offense, you can remove the crap and apply for reinstatement on the legitimate and you can normally get them redone. If your account has been blacklisted, there's no coming back, mate. There's just literally no coming back, even with your legitimate ones. So don't go down that road. Um, the other thing is 
you know, you're talking about, oh, I'm a location or I'm an SAB. Well, what does the business do? I mean, where's their main, main customer? Do they go out to them or do they come to them? It's like, you know, it's chalk and cheese. And that, and that is pretty much going to be your answer. Uh, you know, it's like if customers come, and, and also equally the algo works differently like that. <coughs> because if a person is searching for, you know, something like there and then on their mobile, Google returns the ones to them based upon, you know, sort of what, what they believe the intent is to be. If they're looking for a physical location, they will serve those up. They won't, you know, they will typically not serve up a service area business. If the guy is looking for something that is typically a service area business, they will return those. So, you know, your, your biggest thing is to be sure about what your business does. You know, and, and, then, and then expand on it. Thank you, Tim. Yes, I liked your advice. That there's no coming back from that. All right, let's uh, move on to the next. Um, this one. Um, what's wrong with it? Why won't it go? That's better. This one is from Paul Karelius. He's asking, should I re-index my site? Uh, every time I add content, um, let me give that a, a, a quick answer. Absolutely not. And let's go to the next one. I'll get you a, question, a harder question. Number seven on our run list uh, on an SEO for press release. Uh, Nimi Gill wants or is asking a client wants his press releases added to his blog. What is the best practice for this? Interested to hear what you guys uh, have to say well, about. I don't, <clears throat> I don't think there's really an issue. You know, put it into a into a. Um, uh, you know, into a section on the site that is clearly defined as, you know, in the press, uh, latest releases, whatever, L loads and loads and loads of places to do this. Um, it's not really an issue. Um, the only time you need to double check with your actual, uh, depends on who's distributing them. Um, or where, where, you know, are you using a media company, et cetera? You know, who actually owns the content? Um, you just, you need to double check with who's who's writing and providing it. Are they okay with that? Um, because some media companies, you know, prefer uh, if, if they're writing and publishing it and you're sending it out, you know, your timings, if you're publishing it and before it hit the, Hit, hit, hit their distribution networks. Uh, sometimes they can get a bit arsy about that. So, you know, you need to check with whoever's doing the, the releases. Um, but if it's a, just a general release and it's yours, you created it, you own it, um, it's no worry, chuck in on your side. Uh, but, you know, clearly define it um, because, you know, they, they're typically very flat you know, press releases um, and your average uh, user on the site or reader, probably not going to be wanting to read them. So, um, you know, put them into their own little category. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's go to number eight on our run list. Uh, this one from Andreas Olsen, who asks a question regarding hosting multiple websites on one server. Um, she, Andreas said, that, is there an SEO problem when hosting multiple websites on one web ser server? I can answer this quickly for you guys. Uh, the answer is no, there isn't. And I thank uh, George G for his uh, answer. Um, 
Jesus. All right, let's um, move on to number nine on our run list. Eight to go. Um, Amrit Pal Singh, off-page uh, SEO without confusion. Uh, Amrit says, what daily routine in off-page SEO activities <laughs> should we follow so that we can perform without confusion? I'm not sure exactly what Amrit means by that, but um, I guess uh, he, he would like to know what he should be focusing on on a daily basis uh, in off-page uh, SEO. Well, like, there's, there's like not a daily set thing. I mean, you, you know, when, when you, so look, I, I don't know if it's just for your own site or whether you, you are uh, doing this for a client. I don't, know, I don't know. But so obviously I have clients as such, or even with my own site, I have an idea, like let's just say it's my site. Well, I typically don't do daily, but if it was clients, okay, equally, that's not daily. But I typically have, you know, you have, this is the starting point. These are the things I need to work through, whether that's on-site or off-site. And, um, you know, what do I want to achieve? So, like, off, you know, off, off-site off would be citations. Okay, look, those are done and dusted when they're done and dusted. Um but you could be, you, you know, outreach. Uh, you could be, you know, there could be, um, you could be doing a lot of outreach. You could be doing uh, the, the, the social media in terms of uh, outreach and authority on brand building. Um, you need to have an idea on what you want to do. Put them down into a list, um, and 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 work towards that. I can't tell you what these activities are because. It all depends on what the campaign or the intent in the intent of that particular site is, or, or you know, it could be completely different. You know, I can't say to you, right, write one press release today, um, outreach five five people, engage with three or four authoritative people on social media. Um, yeah. I, 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 honestly, I can't say that to you. You need you need to decide on what your what the what the end game is, what the campaign is, or what the intent in, intent is, and then create a list on how you're going to achieve those, and then split them down into if there's daily tasks, split them down into daily tasks. Fair enough, Tim. Thank you very much. It's, uh, um... Sure, Amrit um, Pal Singh will find that um, valuable. All right, let's go to number 10 on our run list. Getting high quality backlinks from Alan Kazak. Um, Alan said, I have a question regarding backlinks. I'm relatively new to SEO, but which type of backlinks carry the most weight in rankings? I've been hearing that links from directories are not very good. Has anyone used websites like Haro to uh, uh, get backlinks or published articles in blogs uh, or, and gotten high quality backlinks? I'm also wondering if backlinks from forums uh, like Reddit can help with rankings as well. Okay, sweet Jesus. Alan, take yourself out of the 80s, mate. Man, the stuff you read, I don't know what you're reading. I honestly don't know what you're reading. Social media links, things like this. That's like 80s. Right, okay. Help a reporter out. Yeah, that, that, that can work. But, you know, the point there is... Okay, so, so right, how, how am I going to articulate this? Right. So, help a reporter right out, and there are other, you know, we've got, there's UK versions of that, and, I, and I'm guessing there are other different types of this. So, right, let's just actually look at this. That help a reporter out is asking for information about a certain subject. Can, has anybody got um, information on this, stats, 
you know, there's all different things, quotes, things like that from people within that industry, right? Or people that, you know, or, or businesses or whatever. And essentially, you are then providing them, let's say, you know, I mean, half the time it's just a quote or an idea or a thought or blah, 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 okay? So what are you actually doing? You're providing someone with something of use, right? That they will attribute to you, right? As, as kind of seen as sort of an authority or someone that uh, understands the business and they're attributing something to you because you've provided something of use, right? <laughs> so do you see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say here is in order to, to get someone to link to you, you need to provide something of use, right? And that could be a brilliant piece of content on your own site. It could be um, a, uh, you know, part of a research paper, part of an article, a quote. You're providing something of use, right? So start thinking in terms of how can we be perceived as an authority in our area where people then approach you for that or people then share your authority because they want to be within that, okay? So stop trying to look for crap, quick, easy ways. Start thinking about how can I make my brand an authority? How can I become part of, and I hate the term thought leaders, but how can I inject my business within that circle? And that's what you need to start thinking about. Stop thinking about this, these, these shitty little links, right? Because, you know, links will be, you know, natural links will be attracted to you the minute you step out of that providing crap for cheapy, nothing stuff. And you step out of that and you start thinking, right, I want to take my business and build a brand and I want to position it at this point in the market. And, you know, stop chasing all these little crappy, quick, quick fix, oh, social media links or this link or that link. Start thinking about working with people and engaging with people, engaging with customers, engaging with your users understanding what your users are searching for and providing that information, <clears throat> you know, yeah, um, um, you need to start providing something in order to get something. And a link is something and you need to provide something. Right. And, and um, yeah. And stop reading what the heck ever you're reading now, you know, start reading some quality stuff about SEO rather than you know the stuff you're reading i don't know what you're reading but it's scary what, what tim means uh, alan is that if you if you're listening to this later uh, what tim means is that um he's he's worried for you because um, the advice that you are reading is spurious it's it's really of limited value um, also, I'd like to point out to Justin uh, Mago, who uh, also answered this question. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with Justin's answer. Uh, um, and, uh, I, I would say that one link from uh, Microsoft.com. Um, one link from Microsoft.com's homepage yeah, would be worth um, um, tens of thousands of links um, from lesser sites. Um, anyway, I don't want to get that argument, but um, um, yeah, um, I, I would re listen to this, this question. Aaron, uh, Alan, I, I also, and, and, I, and I use this quite often, I use this analogy quite often, and I want you to think about this, right? Because for some reason, you know, you've got this crazy backlink 
garbage in your head. Let's think about, so I use this often and everybody's eyes are going to roll because they already know what I'm going to say. If you had the opportunity to get your product or business mentioned in Forbes or any major national publication, they do not provide links, okay? 99% of them don't ever link, right? But you've just released an awesome product, an awesome concept, an awesome something or other. You've just released some brilliant research, whatever it may be. And, 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 and any national publication talks about you, right? There is no link. But all of a sudden, you get 10,000 visitors, right? And out of that 10,000, 2,000 people sign up or buy or do whatever, right? There's no link, but you've just made a year's worth of sales in a month. Are you really going to cry that there was no link in there? What I'm trying to say to you is stop thinking about that rubbish or, 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 or that kind of stuff and start thinking about getting yourself known, your brand, build it. Thank you, Tim. I, I just realised I've disagreed with Justin, and um, we're both talking about the same thing. Uh, so, apologies, Justin. All right, let's um, go to the next. Um, this one uh, is number eleven on our run list. Why is my blog not getting any traffic from Shashi Kumar? Uh, he said, I'm updating and blogging from, for the last year. Uh, is there any SEO expert who can guide me? Here is the link, and it's uh, a, a, a URL, governmentjobalertindia.com, G-O-V-T-J-O-B-A-L-E-R-T-India.com. I like uh, Matthew, uh, I like I should say uh, uh, Michael Martinez's um, answer here. Um, he's very kind, um, and um, he's uh, given a great response to Shashi. I can't even get that. Done. You can't get it to show up, Tim? No, oh, it keeps telling me it can't be found. Um, oh, because that's trying to chuck it. Dub, dub, dub. Um, what? I can't even get it. Give me the freaking side clearance. I know I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to be pretty mean, um, but I really have to wonder what the point of this site is. Um, the reason I say this is um, we see a lot of these sites um, in the AdSense community asking why they haven't been approved. And the reason is that there's so many of these sites just posting details about government jobs, you know, public sector jobs in India. Um, it's been created en masse every day, and we see a dozen or so every day in the AdSense community. So I really have to wonder what makes your site so different, so unique, so distinguishing from others, so distinct, as to be really useful for someone looking for a job in India. And to me, the answer is, no, there isn't really a great value to the site as someone looking for a job. So I think, I know it's, it's a very mean and cruel thing to say, but I think it's not a question about SEO or getting traffic. It is really about what's the point of your blog and to be totally honest, and again, 
I do apologize for, for being mean, but I don't really see the point. Sorry, is this government job alert India dot blogspot dot com? Yeah, it's it's on Blogger. Okay, but it's a dot blogspot because I was searching dot com and it kept telling me it doesn't exist. Um it did redirect for me. I think there's some problems with blogger uh, with non dub 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 and dub dub dub. But is it government job alert India? Dot blogspot.com. No, it's been uh, at least for me, it turned up as um, dub 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 dot. Uh, okay, dub, let me try dub 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 dot com. So um, it's there, but I still can't. I, I just literally, I can't get the site, I can't find the freaking site. Uh, I just literally, no, I can't, I can't find it. I don't know where the frick it is. No, I can't even find the site, mate, so. Anyway, I wouldn't be apologising for, for for sounding mean, Masataki. You've probably saved Shashi a, a whole lot of wasted effort. Um, anyway, we can only say it as we see it. Let's look at number 12 on our run list, Google My Business Knowledge Card. Um, gets featured uh, on a search engine results page. It's from Ahmed Ibrahim who said, hello guys, how does a Google My Business Knowledge Card get featured in the results when using a keyword, uh, not the listing name? Um, like for argument's sake, a cleaning company in X, some company is displayed and no maps. Okay, so I typically refer to this as a one box. Um, so there's a few different reasons. Um, you no, know, he's just said it, but it's a bogus listing. So then report it as spam, mate. Simple as. Okay, so you wanted to know how, not like but. Um, so the way this happens is there's no other company for that search query from the user's location, right? Or Google feels that they are pretty and they have to be massively confident that when a user searches for cleaning company in X location, that that is the, the authoritative one, or that is the one that, and it has to be a very high percentage of users click on all the time. They do not click back. They don't go to other ones. Let's say there's a choice of two in an area. Um, but typically there is no one else in that area for that search query and that's how you get a one box um yeah it's typically because at that point google feels 100 percent sure that that is the one that people are searching for normally you'll get a one box when there's almost an exact match on the business name to do with the search query if it's bogus then uh report it as spam you fill in the spam report form direct to google my business and uh just fill it in simple as just report it end of excellent tim excellent um let's go to the next number 13 on our run list how long until new backlinks are indexed another question from alan kazak um, who asks, does it take search engines some time to index new backlinks? How long does it usually take? Is it a matter of days, weeks, or months? Uh, well, Google crawls the web. Uh, when they find it, they index it. If you have something that's like, and, and here's another thing for you to think about, because I'm really trying to get you to stop thinking about backlinks like this, Alan. But here's something for you. If Google 
takes months to find something on a site that you have a link on. That is just, that is the purest indication of how crap that link is. Because if this site is authoritative, if it's well visited, if it's uh, read on a daily basis, if there are users that go there every single day, um, and it indexes new stuff, you know, it will index stuff pretty quickly. Just the sheer indication that you have published something on a site or someone's mentioned you on a site and it's taken months for it to be even indexed by Google, right? Just gives you a, an indication on the, the how little value that, that, that Google thinks that this site is to the rest of the world. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, move on to the next. Number 14, um, it's titled, Google is now manually lowering the ranking from Matthias Pantelonius, um, uh, a Canadian SEO, knows his onions. Um, he's asked, he said that comments, uh, Google is now manually lowering the rank of undesirable content largely based on Wikipedia's assessment of the author or site. Um, well, this has been going kind of, that, that part of it were, was a bit more clickbaity. Um, a couple of SEOs actually dove into the site, found that there was a lot of technical issues um that played a part but it isn't to say that well so there's that and this is not about manual lowering either um this is google with various algorithmic updates uh trying to determine what kind of sites are uh basically not junk sites not peddling false things uh, prime per so what we should essentially going back to the whole EAT and Mercola kind of is again crosses those types of uh, areas so um, yeah those are kind of really the, the two major things that came out of it um, this is the standard situation that happens just like CCN and many others um, often the blame is placed at Google's feet when sometimes it's just you know look at your own site first, get a real in-depth audit, um, and then also see what is going on. But there was nothing manual for this one. OK, let's go past this one and leave behind um, the um, deep and meaningful puzzle of Dr. McCullough's site. Um, this one, number 15, SEO, Q, SEO for an FAQ type page from Jason Chong. He said, this is more of a user experience question, which does play into SEO for a FAQ type page. Is it better from a user experience perspective to have one table of contents with anchor links to headings and two accordion style heading or two uh, accordion style headings with questions as headings and answers um, within. Um, Go ahead. Oh. Uh, I was just going to note that, you know, basically from the SEO side, pure SEO. Um, because everything's mobile, it doesn't matter. However, uh, if you're trying to get some of your content uh, into uh, the knowledge, uh, not knowledge, uh, sorry, the featured snippets, that content actually has to be visible. And so if you're putting in accordions, that content will not be factored in. Um, so that's something that just needs to be kept in mind when you're trying to decide between using an anchor based uh, like table of contents or an accordion style one. Thank you, Micah. 
Okay. I guess we can call this one answered, mate, can't we? Let's go to number 16 on our run list. Should I leave the alt tag empty? Uh, it's from Jay Alfavario. He said, I've got an SEO slash ADA question. ADA um, is for people with disabilities, I think. Um, for background or styling images on a website, should I leave the alt tag empty or add something like alt equals decorative or alt equals icon or something else? Yeah, I'd be interested to hear the answers here. I usually view the use of alt for describing um, uh, being very descriptive of what whatever you're using the all for in this like an image or something um so that's that's something like kind of i would you know generally try to put into place and what i mean by descriptive is you're not just you know a one word thing it's usually a phrase or a sentence just being kind of fairly you know nice and descriptive of what the image looks like so as you're kind of looking on the screen here you see jim morrow's face so you might say you know black and white photo of a of an Australian male um, with glasses. I'm, I squint at the picture right now. Um, and so that's kind of more of how I would be, you know, descriptive of the alt tag. And that's just one quick example of how you know, to, to put that together. Um, outside of that, kind of, you know, I don't know what the guidelines are from, you know, the, the ADA end of it, but at least with images, yeah, try to get that in as long as they are uh, usually the most important images or uh, for ADA side and any other kind of images, as long as it's not putting a, an alt in for every single individual. If you're, you're breaking up images into multiple small parts, then it gets a little difficult, but um, which I generally don't recommend doing if you can. Uh, that's kind of at least how I normally think about the use of, of that for, for the old tag. Thank you, Michael. I think in this instance, I would leave it empty. Why is that? Um, because it's background styling images. It, does, it, mm. you know, it doesn't really serve, it's not part of the page content, if that makes sense. And if you use a screen reader, then the out will be read out, right? That's a fair point. So from accessibility point of view, I think in these kinds of situations, I think, because I haven't read the um, guidelines for a very long time, I think, I think the recommendation at least is to leave out empty. I may be misremembering things, but in, so in this kind of instance, because if you um, use a screen reader, it'd be read out. And would that really help someone to navigate your site purely by or voice, rather, sorry. Um, and I think, in that sense, it doesn't help. And as such, you know, decorative. OK, so you know, it says decorative or icon. Um, does it help navigate the site, for example, or does it do any purpose? Does it have any I, I kind of agree to, for the most part, with what you're saying. I think it also depends on how it is visually encompassed. So particularly, let's say, for styling images, you know, if it helps to emphasize what you're doing, like if the image is styled to be circular instead of a normal square, things where you're kind of highlighting how it looks, I think then that might be useful um, to kind of put in the branding as a part of that, or not branding, but the theme and style. Um, so I would kind of consider that. Okay. 
Right, this is our last um, question coming up. This one from Ashish Betty. Uh, he's asked a number of questions of us. Uh, he asked, asking now, he said, I'm getting a lot of impressions, but no clicks. Uh, Ashish said, hello, folks. Uh, it's been six months since the website is live, and because of constant updates from Google, the website has yet to get any credible traffic. Though I see a lot of impressions coming, but no clicks. What can be the possible reasons um, your uh, help is appreciated? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, um, if you're getting impressions and no clicks, two potentials. One is you're not ranking very high. Uh, you can be on the second, third page, and Google still say, hey, you have a set amount of impressions, but not many people usually click that far down. Um, secondarily, you could be on the front page for a, a very uh, high-ranking term. Um, not high-ranking, sorry, high search for term, but your site is really not that relevant it might be relevant enough to rank but like yeah if you're ranking for a brand phrase let's say and for the most part most of that chunk of people are going to be wanting to go to the brand and maybe you're kind of very 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 slightly related uh you're not going to get much quick in traffic as a result of that so those are kind of some of the two major reasons why you'll often see a lot of impressions but no quicks Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? Okay, I think it's that time again. Yes, it's thank you for watching time. Um, we've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, for yet another week. We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this um, all again. Um, but for now, uh, it's um, thank you very much. I also like to thank uh, people like Michael Martinez. Uh, um, oh, so many that didn't just dropped out of my head just then. I, I, I uh, did mean to thank everybody. Um, forgive me, I'm old. Um, I'd like to thank M Masataki Wasa, uh, Micah Fisher Kirshner, and Tim Kappa. Um, for uh, answering the questions tonight. We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again.